Welcome to Point of View. I'm Pastor Josh Barnes. This is the show where we're unashamed to look at political, social, cultural, cultural, and even theological issues from a biblical worldview. We do that because Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. That makes the Bible true um, because Jesus said so. And uh, means you can't be right about issues if you disagree with the Bible. So uh, that's the goal of the show. We are going to talk today about the outrage from the left over Twitter being lost. It's lost. We have lost Twitter to free speech. Man, another one bites the dust. Twitter is now going to be a platform of, of free speech. So says the left, CNN. And they're worried about it. Bill Maher actually is going to say, hey, he's glad because he said Twitter failed at their goal to to provide free speech. But I wonder if Twitter ever meant to provide free speech. I, I don't think they did. But Elon Musk purchased Twitter and uh, has claimed that he's going to you know, make it a platform for free speech, which is a genius idea. In fact, it seems like the only idea that the, that the right has come up with that it will actually work. I mean, we've tried creating our own social media platforms and they, they just don't work. I don't know if you've noticed that. They just haven't worked. Even Trump's truth social media network has just not worked. Maybe it will work. I'm not saying it won't work. I'm just saying it hasn't worked. Part of the reason is because people look at those as just places to go if you're just conservative, which means only conservatives go there, and it's not a very great platform for getting the word out to people beyond just conservatives. And even then, many conservatives don't go there because they're just used to Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and the regular platforms. So um, so by and large, these other programs haven't worked this is the first option solution that's actually seems to work. And that is just buying out the current platform that's already there. Elon Musk is not a conservative. We need to be careful not to praise him too much. But it's hard not to praise him when all of our enemies hate him. And that's sort of <laughs> that's sort of where Elon Musk has found himself. He's my friend because he is the enemy of my enemies. And because he's the proponent of free speech, which is a wonderful thing. Even though he's not where I am on most political issues, at least we can agree on free speech. And the same thing for Bill Maher. I, I disagree with Bill Maher, you know, immensely. But at least we can agree that free speech is important. Here, uh, we're going to be joined in just a moment by a very special guest. I want to show you this first. Here is from Time magazine. Elon Musk and the tech bro obsession with free speech. Freedom of speech has become a paramount concern of the techno-moral universe, but free speech in the 21st century means something very different than it did in the 18th when the founders enshrined it in the Constitution. There is a whole new meaning for free speech. According to the Time magazine, they're outraged because nobody's allowed to have free speech except for them. And with that, we go to our special guest for today. Joining me now is Jerry Serino, host of the podcast Fides, the Fides podcast, which I think is also airs right here on Right America Media. Is that right? It does. Uh, 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. That is awesome. Uh, it's great to have a fellow Ram personality here on yeah. the show. We want to talk today about Twitter. Now, I I know you probably haven't heard, it's this little known story, but apparently Elon Musk purchased Twitter for $44 billion. And yep. have you heard it? Have you heard that story? Uh, yeah, I, mi I might have seen it in uh, one of the news feeds out there. Uh, it, it is being talked about a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, yeah. The reason that he said he wanted to buy Twitter was because of free speech. Now, there's so many things I want to discuss on this. So, you know, we'll, we'll get to all of them, hopefully, in, in the time that we have. But mm -hmm. Elon Musk isn't exactly a conservative, right? He's not exactly in our camp, you know, mm -hmm. I, I would say. Uh, but I like what he's doing, right? I mean, what's what just give me your overall take, Jerry, on on this, uh, on, on Elon Musk and what he's doing here. 
Yeah, so I, I would agree with you on, on the fact that, uh, you know, we don't want to sit here and, and treat Elon Musk like he's a, a god, thing like that. I don't even really know too much about him, um, you know, prior to this. I know he's obviously a billionaire. He's involved. He, he's founded or, you know, Tesla. Uh, all, all that's great. What he's doing and what he's saying he wants to do with Twitter and bringing about free speech and have it be an open platform for people of all beliefs and opinions to be able to speak that is certainly noble and good i don't again know all the, his other uh, issues and where he stands on all the different issues that uh, you and i value very very much uh, but uh, you know this is an issue of free speech i uh, i it always tells me you know if you ever want to see what the left really believes you don't have to go any further than listening to them they will tell you exactly what they believe and uh, what they believe is in censorship and they believe in censoring people that don't have their views and beliefs and that's what they're showing here by opposing uh, elon musk and twitter yeah the outrage is very telling but it's not surprising mm -hmm. And that's, I think, probably the saddest part about the whole thing, uh, that we're not really surprised. We all know that Twitter is, and, and not just Twitter, but Twitter is certainly mm -hmm. very biased. Now, you're you're a podcast host. Have you experienced yep. any of these kind of shadow bans being removed from any of these platforms, YouTube, uh, Twitter, anything like that? Yeah. So I, I believe I have been shadow banned. I'm not the expert. I have a team of people that do my social media and stuff and, and it's been going well, but, um, I do believe that, um, according to them and according to things I've seen that I have been shadow banned. And that's the other part of the censorship thing is that you don't have to specifically take someone off or kick them off of Twitter. It, their algorithms, uh, you know, minimize people's certain people based upon the things they post and the things they believe. So rather than reaching a hundred thousand people, you reached 5,000, whatever it is, you know, they, they work it like that. And that's wrong. In my opinion. Um, I, I have had one episode of my show banned from, uh, YouTube. They actually, I, I downloaded it, put it in when it was about to be released. Um, you, I got an, an email from YouTube indicating that they are not going to uh, let it let it go. It goes against their standards, and it was it was an episode by a lawyer in New York. Her name is Trisha Lindsay, and she was just speaking out against the vaccine mandates. She's not against the vaccine per se, you know, get it, whatever. She just talked about the mandate aspect from a legal standpoint. She's a lawyer, and it was very very normal, perfectly good conversation and they banned it. So it's still available on the podcast apps and it's still available on Rumble. Um, but um, for example, I did another episode with uh, Dr. Christina Parks and she uh, she's super educated, a biologist, really, really well um, educated. And she talked about the concerns of the vaccine. I didn't even bother posting that one on YouTube because I know that it would have definitely been banned and it may, may have me banned, meaning my whole channel. Yeah. And and again, that that's wrong. All of that, that's wrong. And it, it's wrong whether you're espousing our beliefs or opinions or the left. I don't want the left banned. I don't want Bill Maher banned from anything. Um, or, you know, I, I don't. I want them all to have freedom of speech. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I've experienced that too. I think, um, um, I think I've, I'm up to about three or four videos that have been removed from YouTube. And if they happen too close together, they do, they will just delete your entire channel. So think, thankfully yeah. mine have been spread out over several years. Um, but Good. yeah, um, it's, it's a real problem. And, and those who are out there posting mm -hmm. things, we know this, um, you may know this as a viewer, just posting, just sharing something that someone else, even on Facebook, though, though, they're doing less of, you know, banning people now, they'll still put up little tags that say, Oh, you know, Facebook has decided that this is untrue, especially if you're saying something about Facebook being biased, Facebook will say no, we don't think this is true. <laughs> um, which which is, I think a problem from a legal standpoint, because they're presenting themselves as um, a, an open air, um, exchange of ideas sort of a company that they, they're not claiming mm -hmm. that they are biased now if they claimed in their in their in, you know in, in their description of their of their business mm -hmm. 
that they were a liberal organization that's promoting liberal speech than uh, over, over conservative speech, then I think they would be legally fine to do that. But they are not claiming that. They're, they're specifically claiming to be non-biased and yet obviously being biased. It's interesting, though, that you mentioned Bill Maher. And I want to play you a couple clips mm-hmm. to get your take on him. This is okay. uh, from – th- well, it was posted. I found it this weekend. It may have been uh, last week on CNN. Um, and I also have a clip of Bill Maher. I'll get to that in a second. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your take on this. Okay. Let me play This is from CNN um, on yeah. e- Elon Musk uh, taking Twitter and the dangers that this presents. No, I think there's a bigger problem that when we focus on the personalities of people like Elon Musk and people say, oh, I think Elon's thinking this or that. There's a bigger problem here about how we are going to control the channels of communication mm-hmm. in this country. In 1927, we had the Radio Act. 1934, the Communications Act. Congress stepped in. We made rules. FCC wasn't great, but it's still regulating the broadcast industry. You right. can't use vulgar language. You can't do all these things with speech. We gave over our, our what amounts to our airwaves or our Internet waves to Mark Zuckerberg, and Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. And we are in so much trouble because those guys believe in making money. We've already seen that with the 2016 election mm-hmm. in Zuckerberg when he was taking rubles for ads from Russia and say, oh, I think it's crazy to think they had any influence on this election. Mm-hmm. Musk is the same. Musk doesn't want it. Oh, you know, he's upset with the SEC, tried to, how oh, dare they question him? You know what I'm saying? This is dangerous. We can't think anymore in this country. We don't have people, <laughs> no, I'm serious. We don't have people in Congress who can make regulations that can make it work. I think we can look to the Western countries in Europe for how they are trying to limit it. But you need, you need controls on this. You need regulation. You cannot let these guys control discourse in this country or we are headed to hell. We are there. Trump opened the gates of hell and now they're chasing us down. So, (laughs) this is is hard to take in. He's saying it's dangerous for somebody to, to buy a, a, a media platform, or not really a media, a um, social media platform yep. for the purpose of free speech, that's dangerous. And that free speech, he's saying, needs to be regulated. And it's incredibly dangerous. This, this boggles my mind. You know, and watching that, that, rant that he went on so many things go through your mind there are so many areas of of what he's saying that are you know quite frankly absurd and and it does blow your mind it because what he's saying makes no sense it is absolutely absurd you you know what he's basically essentially saying is is that they in government those people in government we don't even know their names they're part of this agency or that agency the fcc wherever they are they should tell us what is true they should tell us what we can and can't listen to right there was uh, the broadcasting uh, you know, doctrine that they used to have i think uh, ronald reagan got rid of it and they i think it's called the fairness doctrine that's what it is where you know they the left was upset about the you know for instance rush limbaugh on the radio he's got all this time and where are all the liberals and they wanted to have equal time and all that kind of garbage and they don't, they don't public to be able to have that freedom to decide who they want to listen to, what they want to listen to. They want control. So it's really, it tells you this is who they are. Every every society, every government in history that has been tyrannical has wanted to control speech and they wanted to control what people hear. And they want to be the ones to do that controlling. And it's always those that believe in big, massive government, right? He sounded just like a Nazi propagandist in what he was saying. Oh, my gosh, we can't let people hear this or talk about this. We have to control that, right? It's absurd. I mean, and the thing is, you you, you really hit the nail on the head when you're talking about the fairness doctrine and Rush Limbaugh and all this stuff. Because what they wanted to do is they wanted to to force radio stations to to play mm. liberal content that nobody wanted to listen to, but they right. they didn't want uh, you know for instance CNN to be forced to 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 carry conservative content right so right. They, they're for regulation where they don't have control because they want to yeah. control it but where they do have control they want free you know free open no regulation so that they can continue you know spewing their nonsense 
Yep. Yeah, I mean they what they really want they don't want to they don't want to control truth. They want to control the narrative, right? Because because if you think about the left, if they wanted to get rid of disinformation, wrong information, then they would take CNN off the air because mm -hmm. there is so much that they have done. I and mean, we could even, it's even provable, right? I mean, we could just look at COVID. They told us, you know, 15, two weeks to, to stop the spread, right? They, you know, Fauci told us uh, masks work, they don't work, then they work, now you have to have two. Uh, they told us uh, we, they had to censor hydroxychloroquine and treatment for COVID that, that could have been life-saving for people. They censored that. They told us Trump colluded with Russia. He didn't. They told us Hunter Biden's laptop was uh, was Russian propaganda. False, right? These aren't even guesses. These aren't even my opinions. These things were false. That the mainstream media, the ones who want to control everything, they got completely wrong. And the the sad part is is they knew it was wrong. Everything that I just mentioned, and there's plenty more you could probably point out. They all knew it was wrong. They all knew Trump did not collude with Russia. They knew it. The very people going out on on the news, you know, Clapper and Brennan and all these people that were saying, oh, yeah, there's evidence. They knew as they were saying differently um, in under oath in Congress when they were testifying. We didn't hear about it because it was it, it was kept under wraps. But um, they they don't care about the truth. They want to control the narrative. And the narrative is that whatever they say goes. That's yeah. it. You know, and it's interesting that you mentioned earlier Bill Maher. I have a I have a clip from mm -hmm. him. I am in zero ways am I a fan of Bill Maher, except yeah. for the conclusion that he comes to here. Um, he's a, he's a big atheist. I mean, he's not a conservative mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form. But yeah. he at least says, "Look, we we do need free speech." I mean, the, he he at least draws draws that line. Here's a clip from from his show. I think from just last week. Exactly. Right. But that's not really where the argument is. The argument to me is like, has Twitter failed in setting themselves up in the past as the judge of what can go out there? And I would say, yes, <clears throat> you have. You failed when you threw the New York Post off of Twitter for talking about Hunter Biden's emails, and it turned out that was a real story. Right. You failed when you said we couldn't read about whether COVID had come from a lab. You failed. Did you read about this Babylon Bee? Do you know what the Babylon Bee is? I didn't know this. No. It's like the Christian version of the onion. <laughs> Because everyone needs that. Well, some people do. I thought that was not Fox all news. you and me, okay? It says you're a trusted source for Christian news and satire. I didn't know there was such a thing as Christian satire. I thought the religion itself was satire. That's me. I'm not everybody, okay? I'm not everybody. Have a little humility, right? right? So listen to this. They got flagged for. They posted a funny video. This is funny to them. Okay. Sensitive content, Twitter said. In the video, they were making fun of Twitter for being too sensitive. <laughs> this is so through the looking glass. In the, here's what happens in the video. This woman who, going into the Twitter building, this is, you know, parody. This is what people do on television and have done forever. Okay. She's complaining to HR about how sensitive Twitter is. And the guy shows her an ink blot. And she keeps seeing Hitler in all the ink blots. <laughs> okay, then she runs screaming out of the building because she's. This is sat. This is right. well within what satire has always been, and the fact that they flagged this for being insensitive shows their complete lack of self-awareness about what their own problem is. If that's where the line is, you have failed, Twitter. You yeah. do need a new show. So um, I would say that Twitter hasn't, of course, he's wrong about, you know, the whole of Christianity being a satire and all that kind of stuff. But um, but I would say that he, Twitter didn't fail, that I think this was their mission all along. I don't, I don't think that, you know, I think they never intended for actual free speech. This is why they're freaking out when someone buys the company and says, hey, I just want free speech. You're 100 percent correct. You're 100 percent. And, you know, it's it's funny uh, that. Uh, that Bill Maher, he is a bit of an in an, an enigma uh, in himself. He has done some interesting or said some interesting interesting things. Obviously, as you mentioned, what he says about Christianity, he's 
you know, he, he's really not a good, good guy in a lot of ways. Uh, but he came to the, the defense of Jordan Peterson. I don't know if you remember, he mm-hmm. had him when Jordan Peterson was getting destroyed um, because of his stance on the pronoun issue uh, up in Canada. Uh, and he, you know, he, he has said that, hey, I think the left has gotten it wrong in regards to COVID as far as their response. Hey, look at Florida. It, it, he's, he's very interesting in, in the sense that he stumbles upon the truth periodically. Um, and um, it is interesting to hear what, you know, his take on things like that, that he does call out his side when they have blatantly lied. And I would, I would want to ask him, you know, if it's he, cause he points out the lies about COVID and the origins and so on. And some of the other things they ask him to say, Hey, do you ever stop and think that maybe he has lied to you about a lot of other issues, you know, whether yeah. it's religion, whether it's abortion, whether it's the economy, what else have they lied to you about? Yeah. I mean, at least he can see that there are some things that, that have been lied mm-hmm. about and he's just stopping way, way, way too short. <laughs> yeah, but, for sure. But, but this is why we need free speech, right? This is why we need mm-hmm. information out there, even if it's false information so that people can say, look at it, say, I'm going to check and see, you know, what of this is mm-hmm. true. What of, what of it's false. I don't need Twitter deciding what's true and false. I need to right. get the information, the claims that people are making and then do, Ooh, here's a word research and find mm-hmm. out if it's true and research is a scary word for people today so um speaking <laughs> of is. research though as we as we're coming to the end of our time here tell us about some mm-hmm. of the research that you've done some of the work you've put into your podcast and and uh you know some of the good quality content that, that you provide to help with this matter free speech helping people with this research that that needs to be done uh, looking into these issues yeah, so I I have uh, my show. I have guests. I I release two episodes a week, uh, and I interview guests. I keep them to about thirty minutes um, uh, each episode, and um, I look for people that that are basically speaking for me in my general philosophy. But they're either a great example of our our stance on the issues, or they bring a certain expertise. He's, maybe I don't have. So I have a, I, I focus a lot on pro-life and I have people from phenomenal groups and organizations out there who are doing great things, not just to, um, to end abortion, but also to help women and families who are in need financially, who need uh, emotional medical support, whatever the case may be. And I like to, to showcase them as well because there, there's so many people out there that don't have a big name and they're fantastic. But then I've had people on talking about the border, a former uh, head of border patrol on my show and talking about the border. Well, I, I know what I believe about the need to protect our, our borders, but then having someone who's, who's there and who knows the very specific details um, is really, really important. So when you, you point out the need to do research, you know, people should listen to other people, you know, and hear what they have to say. Here's a guy from used to work at the Border Patrol. I think it's relevant to know what he has to say, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what people need to do rather than just you know waiting for CNN to tell them what to think without any background. Yeah, you know, and our, our audience um, has um, is very, very much heard a lot about uh, the uh, abortion issue. Uh, we like to talk about that quite a bit here on Point of View. Uh, looks like we may be talking about it very soon as there's a ruling uh, pending here from the Supreme Court. I might have you back on uh, when that when that happens just to get your take on it. So people can go, uh, they can watch you on the Wednesday live stream on Right America Media. They can find that on www.ramtv.live or on facebook.com forward slash Right America Media. And then uh, you've got your own uh, Facebook page as well for, for your show. Um, how do you find that? I do. Yeah, you could um on Facebook or you can go to Feed Ace Podcast with Jerry Serino on Facebook. Uh, same with uh, Instagram uh, in the like. Um, all that's out there. Just search either either my name or Feed Ace Podcast and you'll find it. I'm all on all the different uh, social medias. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Rumble. 
and um, all the podcast apps, so Apple, Spotify, and for and people any who other are wondering, you might have for people who are wondering what does fides mean. Uh, fides is Latin for uh, knowledge, faith, and truth. So people, you know, if you if you're a Marine, that's you would ask me. And before we started recording, if I'm a Marine, people have heard the Semper Fi, Semper Fidelis, you know, it's forever faithful. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's a Latin. It has, you know, kind of a few meanings to it, like most words do. It, it means a faithful knowledge and truth. And that's what we seek to do on my show. That's awesome. Well, yeah, go go check out. Um, the Fides podcast, Jerry Serino, thank you so much for joining us on Point of View today. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Well, concluding thoughts. Guys, let's, let's wrap this up with some spiritual application here, okay? Um, yes, free speech is important, but you have free speech. It's important that the government recognizes that you have free speech, but you have a free speech. This is important. As Christian people, we are comm Jesus commanded us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he did it on this basis. He says, all power is given unto me. Go ye therefore into all the world and teach all nations. We are to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ faithfully. And nobody can stop us. Nobody has the right to take away our free speech. Now, governments may try to take away our free speech. They may try to tell you that you can't say this or can't say that. Uh, social media platforms may say you can't say this and you can't say that. But yet they have no right, no authority, no power to do so. Because Jesus has all authority. All authority has been given unto him and he's told us to preach the gospel. So my long and short conclusion here is just this. Speak the truth, especially concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ, as long as you, and, and anything else that you know is true, right? I mean, don't go out there just spewing things that you heard that could possibly be true, conspiracy theories. I'm talking about stuff you know is true, right? And there's one thing you know is true, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And speak the truth even if it means censorship, even if it means banning, even if it, whatever, it, whatever it is, speak the truth because you have the right to speak the gospel. Jesus said so. You're going to be persecuted for it, sure, but you need to speak the truth. This is what Christian people have, have always known and should continue uh, to remember. And with that, I remind you that uh, Point of View is brought to you by the Right America Media Network. You can uh, actually go get an amazing up to 60% off at MyPillow by using the promo code RAM for Right America Media at the MyPillow website. And you'll not only get an amazing discount on amazing products, but you also support shows like Point of View on Right America Media. So check it out today. Go to MyPillow.com, use the promo code RAM at checkout, get an amazing discount and keep shows like ours on the air. We thank you and we'll see you next time right here on Point of View.